So, you want to start programming a project. Cool, I'm proud of you. You don't know how to start. Oh, sounds like a good case of skillish. A lot of you have been asking me how to start a new programming project, so let me help you out. So, the problem is you don't know how to start the project. Why? Oh, you can't talk to me. Right. I'm gonna assume these possible reasons. One, you're overthinking the project. Two, you don't know how to plan and execute. Three, you don't know how to program. Four, you don't have a project idea. And five, you have skill issues and you're stuck in tutorial hell. I'm going to assume 80% of you are the last three reasons. Don't be embarrassed. I was just like you. I had issues starting projects, but now I have issues finishing them. When you have more experience, you'll have those problems too. Don't worry. When I first started programming, I definitely felt the most overwhelmed starting the project. But once I had something, it was pretty easy to work on it. It's just starting the project. So how do we fix this? Well, we need to start with the idea. We can't really start a project without having an idea, right? Well, luckily for you, I have a video on project ideas if you're interested, or you can check out the greatest newsletter of all time, Sloth Bites. <laughs> I hate you. Let me show you how I like to find project ideas. Let me get this out of the way first. Finding a project idea can be as simple as solving a problem you encounter every day or as complex as trying to create the next billion dollar company. The problem here is that a lot of beginners want to create the next billion dollar company when they don't even know how to program. So before we even start thinking of project ideas, what's your goal? Do you want to get better at programming? Yes. Do you want to put this project on your resume? Yes. Did you want to turn this project into a business? Yes. What do you want to do with this project. Your goal is going to determine what project you want to do. Another thing you should think about is what do you like? Do you like making games? Do you like AI? What type of websites do you like? These questions will also help you figure out what type of project you should do because if you're interested in it, then you're more likely to actually start and finish the project. Now, for those of you who want to make a resume project before you work on a project, take the time, look at some jobs, read the description, and look at the technologies that they want. And look at multiple jobs, please. Look at the technologies that they want, see which technologies show up the most, and use those technologies for your project. It's pretty obvious. If your project uses the technologies that they want for the job, you're more likely going to get picked. Pretty simple. If you don't know a single thing about programming, you should probably focus on learning the programming language itself before trying a project. Just a recommendation. Since you all still can't talk to me, thankfully, <laughs> I'm going to assume most of you want to get better at programming. So enough yap, let me explain how to start finding a project idea. The first strategy I have to finding project ideas is steal, I mean taking inspiration. I need you to understand, your project does not have to be groundbreaking. The goal of your project is to apply your skills in a practical way, not to change the world. You're here to learn how to code. So look at projects that are commonly recommended to people. So on YouTube, books, online resources, learning platforms, and try to make them, preferably without relying on the tutorial because you won't learn anything if you keep relying on them. These projects are usually designed to teach you fundamental programming concepts and problem solving skills. So these projects could be something like creating a calculator, a simple blog, a to-do list. Even though these projects are common, you're still going to learn a lot from them. But that's not enough to some of you. Some of you want these projects to be resume worthy. And unfortunately, some of these projects aren't enough. If you want your project to be resume worthy, it really helps to make it unique. This is because recruiters see thousands of applications and they most likely see the same projects. You need to stand out. So let me show you how you can make your project unique. It's pretty simple to make your project unique, but to be fair, you have to be a little creative and most of you aren't. So maybe it's not so simple. All you need to do is have one unique twist, just one. We can take some notes from businesses. In the real world, there's a lot of projects or businesses that are the same. Most of them are pretty similar. They just have that one unique twist and some of them don't even have that. Here, let's do an example of making a unique project. A to-do app. Super basic, nothing crazy. Every web developer has made that at least once. How can we make it unique? What's a unique twist we can do? How about an AI to-do app? A little less common, but it's getting more popular. Okay, how about an AI to-do app for programmers? This is a unique project. Even though it's still a to-do list app, it stands out a bit more. Plus, you're going to end up learning more than if you simply followed a tutorial for a normal to-do app, because now you have some extra functionalities you have to work on. I assume you have your project idea now. So how do we even start? If you watch my past videos and my upload schedule, you'd know I'm a pretty lazy person. So obviously, I have a lazy way to start projects. But let me explain what I mean by lazy. When I say lazy, I don't mean brain rot or just doing things sloppy. Sometimes that's not what I want. Most times. 
When I say lazy, I'm talking about working smarter, not harder. We here at Sloth Corporation encourage laziness as long as it saves time, reduces stress, and increases productivity. So let me show you the lazy way of starting a good quality project. So when we start our project, like most things in programming, we break it down into small manageable tasks. We call that problem solving, divide and conquer. When you start a project, break it down based off what you know. Let's do an example based off the to-do app. If I wanted to start this project, what do I know? Well, I unfortunately know JavaScript. I also know a little bit of Next.js and the goal of this project is for me to learn Next.js better. So let me start there. How about I start at the Next.js documentation? Oh, I'm so smart. And would you look at that? A get started guide. As you can see, I've reduced a lot of unknown variables by thinking about what I know. And now I'm one step closer to starting. Now, another tip that I recommend when you start out a project is use templates or boilerplates. You heard me right. Use boilerplate code. However, if you're completely new to a concept, don't use the boilerplate until you understand what it's doing. If you do understand the concepts, then feel free to use templates. It's going to speed up the process and you can just start building. But, but using templates is cheating. Back in my day, we built everything from scratch. Shut up. Some people have problems with templates or boilerplate code. Are templates bad? No, definitely not. Why do you think we make them in the first place? A lot of developers like to be lazy and I'm one of them. That's why we love templates. They speed up everything. Once again, this all depends on your project goals and experience. If your goal is to learn or you don't have much experience with this, maybe a template shouldn't be for you. But if the goal is something like a resume project or you already have experience with this, use a template. It'll speed everything up. It's not going to kill you. As long as you understand most of the code, you'll be fine. A nice goal you should try to reach for your projects is an MVP. An MVP stands for a minimum viable product. Now you're probably thinking, what's an MVP sloth? Well, an MVP is the most basic version of your project. You're just focusing on the core essentials and nothing more. No feature creep, no procrastinating on random features, hopefully just the essential stuff that your project needs to work. Once you finish that, now you can work on some other stuff. Now my most important tip for any lazy person, please take regular breaks. Yeah, taking a break and touching grass will help you. I'm not lying. If you take a short break, you're going to develop some brain cells. And when you go back to programming, it's going to feel easier. Okay, it's time for you to pay me back and support the channel by checking out today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a learning platform where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. Brilliant is a learning platform that's designed to be effective. They focus on hands-on problem solving that lets you play with concepts, which is a method proven to be six times more effective than watching lecture videos. Plus, all the content on Brilliant is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, Google, and more. Brilliant helps you build your critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorizing. And Brilliant helps you learn in just a few minutes with fun lessons you can do whenever you have time. They also make it easy to learn anywhere right on your phone, whether you're diving into a new topic or you're doing quick practice sessions. Brilliant has a lot of programming courses and it's a great way to build the fundamentals. You can get familiar with Python and start building programs on day one with their built-in drag and drop editor. You'll also get to learn fundamental coding concepts like loops and variables to nesting and conditionals. And not only that, you're going to learn one of the most important skills, thinking like a programmer, because you're going to start writing complex programs to build games and apps. So if you'd like to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash the coding slaw or scan the QR code that's on the screen. You can also click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. You're welcome. Good luck with your projects and I hope they fail.